announced it. Uh, to, tonight, we're going to talk about the Christmas mission offering. And we are so excited about uh, some new things we're going to do this year. And so let me kind of talk about that story. You're going to hear a lot more about it in the coming weeks as well. But in addition to our normal denominational channels, we have partnered with Highlands Fellowship Church, which is a large uh, Virginia Baptist Church in Abington, Virginia, and just a great story and just some of the f some fine folks in that church. Alan Jesse is their pastor. Alan and I have been friends for years, and um, Alan is the second pastor of that church, um, and that church bought a house across the street from their church about 22, three years ago. Um, a neighbor had lived there for a long time, and then this big church kind of came out and built across the street, and, and that wasn't the neighbor's best outcome. So they just went to the neighbor and said, hey, we, we want to make this right. Can we just buy your house? And everybody was happy. Well, then they had this huge house. <laughs> and what do you do with it? Well, they started bringing pastors from around the world to Abington, Virginia, in the far <laughs> southwest corner of our state, and just doing some training and encouragement. And the really neat thing beyond all of that is that's given Highlands Fellowship relationships with pastors all over the world. And so they are now able to go direct church to church, which is what we talked about on Monday. Right. Sometimes <clears throat> uh, the weakness of a denominational struggle uh, structure is you're not going church to church anymore. Right. You're going church to denomination, denomination to church. Right. And so we want to try some church to church partnerships, which is mm -hmm. something that uh, the folks at our mission agencies have been trying to encourage for, for a number of years mm -hmm. now. And we're going to do this with Highlands Fellowship in Abington, Virginia. And what's really exciting is some of the deeper relationships they have are with uh, pastors in the Middle East. Right. And um, Alan and I were communicating when uh, what was happening in Afghanistan was, was starting to, to be a, a real challenge. And um, they have a, a couple of pastors in Pakistan. And they, these Afghan refugees were flooding across the border, and they started planting churches. And, and Alan sent me an email like on a Monday or Tuesday after the Sunday. He said, Dan, they were, they were planting a church and expected 300 to show up, and 600 showed up. Hmm. And he said, you know, the opportunity and the need is tremendous. And so we're, we're sending resources to help them get these church, more churches planted, to help them meet the humanitarian needs of yeah, folks. Yeah. And so just some great, great work that's happening. Um, and so often we can get stuck into, oh, isn't that awful without doing something about it. And, and this year in our Christmas mission offering, we're giving all of us an opportunity to do something right. about it, that's right. to be, be a part of it, to be generous. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a major focus of where the money that goes to the Christmas off mission offering will go. And then they also continue to do some work in Tanzania. Some of us long-term Virginia Baptists will remember that Tanzania was our first international partnership. Okay. Um, and uh, Highlands Fellowship has a strong relationship in Tanzania and other countries in Africa where they're doing a lot of uh, clean water projects and church planting. So we will, we will join with Highlands Fellowship in helping make a difference in churches in the Middle East and Africa. And the next part of that equation is how we continue to build those church-to-church -church partners. Because we're not going to do it through Highlands. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're helping mm -hmm. us provide an avenue. But ultimately, it's about us having a relationship with churches in the Middle East. Being involved. And right. them having a relationship with us. And so uh, it's an exciting time. It's a new initiative. We are so excited. We had about uh, a dozen of our leadership uh, get on a Zoom call with Alan probably a month ago now. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I mean, the excitement in that phone call. And then after Alan got off the Zoom and I said, all right, what are we thinking? And they're like, let's do this. And uh, so we're real excited. You'll hear more about it in the coming weeks as we, uh, as we get ready. And, but I, I, I pray, I, I've said this a few times here lately. I, I think in the, um, in the renewing of our church that's been happening for, for a, a number of years now, uh, the, the thing we have still lacked is the connection to international missions. Right. And, and this <clears throat> is, now we need to start doing that a little more intentionally. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what we're, what we're working on this Christmas. So I, I hope we're just going to have a great, generous Christmas mission offering. And, and, and uh, uh, God will be glorified, but we'll, we'll develop some relationships we currently don't have. So I'm real yeah. excited about that. 
And so let's talk about what's happening in missions in churches. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of said this is a back to the future era of missions. There, there was a time when right. this is how we did missions. Right. We did it church to church. Right. Um, denominational structure came along to help facilitate some of that. Uh, but this is not unusual. The passage we read from Monday, mm -hmm. Philippians 4, is church to church. Right. Um, and so I think that's important. Um, we want to we want to have a direct connection. We want to know what's happening in the Middle East so we can respond mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Some of the things we talked about the church in the global south, the explosion of growth of the church in the global south. Uh, still, they live in great poverty in many yes. cases, and yes. so the wealth that we've been blessed with to kind of connect those two. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things I'm excited about, and we can talk about this. Uh, and we're not we're not ready yet. Um, but we have the largest private child care uh, center in Culpeper County. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder how child care works in other places in the world. <laughs> and can we partner? Can our child care center partner with their child care center or with a, an international child care center? Could we, could we encourage one another? Well, and you know, you say that, Dan, but we just recently went through a big, big study with a group getting ready for our adult day right and right if you remember one of the things they did that we right. didn't expect was they went looking at adult days globally yeah international and found day. some <laughs> yeah and so yes those opportunities exist to be able right. to be partnering not only with the cdc but with adult day i mean it's amazing that yeah. those things are available to partner yeah. together. And, and <clears throat> some of the work that we do over at the Culpepper mm -hmm. and connecting. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so we're looking to connect in, in new ways yes. with, with what God's yes. doing in the world that I think can be exciting. And then that church in the global South needs to come to us. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. sent missionaries to them. Those missionaries need to start coming right. back to us because right. We need to hear what God's mm -hmm. doing, and we need to be around them. Um, yes. And so I'm hoping in the next 10 years you'll start seeing um, more missionary evidence mm -hmm. in churches like ours. I, I, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that the next, maybe the next generation, the second generation of pastors and church uh, vocational leaders will come from the global south into right. the west and we will start seeing that and mm -hmm. we're seeing that in places right. already um i think that's only going to increase yes so that that's exciting we've done we and we've done a little bit of this uh before i got here the brazilian soccer team used to come through and that was <laughs> always great we used to host them at the my first church and um so yeah i, I think we're going to enjoy that mm -hmm. um and then we'll we'll still do if, if if you want to give to Lottie Moon, which is our international right. missions uh, for Southern Baptist Convention, or if you want to give to Alma Hunt, which is our state mission offering, mm -hmm. you are still welcome to do that, and, and we encourage you to do that. Um, but we're going to also do this piece, right. and just really excited about and, it. And, you know, Dan, this is part of our DNA. Because right. we look back at the church, and you and I were talking before we started about the church history and missions. I mean, Lottie Moon actually spoke here. Right, I right. Mean, that's right. The church has been involved. <laughs> to 25 people. <laughs> in, in international <laughs> missions for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's important to who right. we are. Right. You and Becky have been missionaries. Talk about just what it means to kind of be on the receiving end, if you will, of uh, people's generosities. Well, you know, it, it's so important, and I always told people, especially after we got back, the denominational thing is a great thing, and it's a damaging thing right. at the same time. Because I always told people, a lot of times churches would just want to send money, which right. was great. We could do the projects we wanted right. to do, but they lost connection with right. what their folks on the field were doing and the folks on the field when we came home. The church didn't recognize, oh, these were folks that we were helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep, we sent yep. you money. Yep, that's and right. that is so important. I tell people, go and see what's going on because that's where you get excited about what God's doing. Reading it in the magazine is not the same right, as right. seeing it take place. And it's not the same as buying into. I believe that yeah. the Lord can make a change here and he can make a change at home if we work together. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, let's make sure we're encouraging missionaries. So here are, yes. some, here are some things I say. I try to say every year around the Christmas mission offering. First of all, let's be generous. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. because we're generous, but right. because God is generous. That's right. And we want to be like God. Mm -hmm. And so let's be generous. Um, and 
you know, what, what uh, uh, somebody close to me said a bunch of years ago who happens to be a CPA, um, everybody can be generous when things are well. Right. When things are good, everybody <laughs> writes checks. That's right. Being generous in times of uncertainty, mm -hmm. that's where you see faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and there's certainly uncertainty uh, in our Absolutely. world right now. I think the church needs to step up mm -hmm. and say, in this time of uncertainty, we believe there is hope in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and, and we believe our generosity should flow towards that hope. Yeah. Um, and then what I learned growing up in a Baptist church is your single largest Christmas gift should be to the Christmas mission offering. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just always done that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about on Monday how giving helps me keep uh, – keep my life, uh, brings contentment to my life because I'm not chasing experiences right. or material things. I, I, I focus more on this. And, um, uh, and we've practiced that with our children and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when they establish their own <laughs> homes. Uh, <laughs> but, but I hope that's something they'll, they'll mm -hmm. keep going because what greater thing to do at Christmas, which is the Lottie moon line, right? Right. than to give mm -hmm. uh, to the great God mm -hmm. who loves this world and to help that work happen. So can you imagine what would happen if everybody in our church, single largest gift, wow. was to the Christmas mission office? Wow. Um, that, that, changes. that could get real exciting. So I just want to encourage you to be praying about that. Mm -hmm. We will talk more about it in the coming weeks. We'll hope to show you some videos. Some of the challenges of doing missionary work in sensitive areas mm -hmm is what we can and can't share. Right. But we're gonna share as much as we can in the coming weeks and connect you to, to some of the work that we're partnering with, with Highlands Fellowship. All right, so here are our closing questions today. Who can you talk to about giving to the Christmas mission offering? Because I remember, I'm so old, I remember when each Sunday school class would set a goal oh, yes. of giving. Yes. Um, well, and So they would talk about it. Not only did you set goals in your Sunday school class, families right. set goals. Right. Yeah. And um, we didn't do a lot of walking down the aisle with offering envelopes in my home church, but we did when it was Christmas, Christmas. mission offering time. We walked that envelope down the aisle. And uh, so who can you talk to? And then just dream with us about how our generosity can lead to relationships. Uh, can you imagine if we had uh, a relationship with two or three other child care centers around the world? Oh. Can you imagine if we were started sending some of our young adult teachers to go teach there for a mm -hmm. semester mm -hmm. or go help them for a mm -hmm. summer camp. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the impact that would make mm -hmm. on 50, four or five employees of our child development center? And then having some of those folks come here to help us. And imagine the difference it'd make on the children's lives. Right. That are right. hearing from these folks. Right. Yeah. Um, and so just help mm -hmm. us dream about how our generosity uh, can, can lead to some relationships. And, uh, and again, this is part of the overall renewal of our church. Right. Uh, we got great relationships in our community, and we're going to continue to build on those. Mm -hmm. And now we need to kind of bring in the international peace, and we are excited about this one. So look forward to talking to you more about that. Uh, let God lead us, and uh, let's be excited at the end of December when we see what God does through us. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for calling us to a greater mission than just ourselves and just this church that you have put the heart of the world on our hearts because it's on your heart. And so, Lord, help us to be generous in a way that brings glory to you and allows us to share the story of your great generosity to us. Thank you for the joy that is ours in being part of your great mission. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you this weekend.